Well, last week it was revealed that Victorian councils, in conjunction with police, were putting unmanned surveillance cameras in public parks to monitor the movement of citizens. But according to barrister and president of Liberty Victoria, Julian Burnside, this Orwellian measure was a case of nothing to see here. It all sounds pretty sensible to me, he tweeted. <laughs> it was too much even for Liberty Victoria, who tweeted, the comment was a reflection of Julian's personal view, but didn't precisely align with Liberty, Liberty's position on the matter. Translation, our president has compromised himself and this organisation with his ill-informed remarks. But good news, Burnside's had a couple of days to rethink what being a president of a civil liberties <laughs> group actually involves. And yesterday, he agreed that those measures were in fact wildly disproportionate, tweeting, imagine how it would be if every unmanned surveillance camera was replaced with a plainclothes policeman. We're talking thousands of them, he said. You'd think when uh, Victorians are facing unprecedented and unwarranted restrictions of their rights that their civil liberties president would be devoting himself full time to their repeal. But not for Burnside. Just two days ago, he found the time to plug his wife's jewellery business. And it's not the first time that Burnside, instead of standing up for civil liberties, has instead sounded more like a shill for the Andrews government. Two weeks ago, he tweeted, the simple fact is that Dan Andrews has distinguished himself as Australia's leading politician. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Leading in the sense that Victoria has recorded 90% of coronavirus deaths in Australia. Is that how he's leading? <laughs> But it gets better. Last week he tweeted, quote, most Victorians are unhappy about the extended COVID-19 lockdown, but most Victorians understand why it's necessary. Really, Julian? <laughs> the... A new poll this morning shows Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews would lose an election if it were held today. Truth is, Burnside has a long history of embarrassing himself. Remember this tweet in 2018 from a bogus <laughs> Donald Trump account. Arrived in Argentina, first time that any US president has visited. They love me here. I've never been to Africa, so it's very exciting. It was obviously a parody account, but <laughs> guess who fell for it? Wow, tweeted Burnside. <laughs> Leave aside that he can't spell. Might have been a clue there. Trump thinks Argentina is in <laughs> Africa. President of the USA and a grade A moron. Uh, who's the moron, Julian? <laughs> oh, how about in 2019 when a parody account for One Nation Senator Malcolm Roberts tweeted, please show me the empirical evidence of the moon landing and don't bother with anything from that corrupt organisation, NASA. Burnside excitedly tweeted and has subsequently deleted this. Really? And you are in our parliament? God save us. Have a look at some of the photographs of Earth taken from the moon. <laughs> well, as it turned out, someone was off the planet, but it wasn't Senator Malcolm Roberts. <laughs> Here was Burnside in 2011, breezily declaring that the collapse of the Gillard government's Malaysian solution would not result in an influx of asylum seekers. Now, the idea that we're going to be flooded with uh, boat people is one of the boogies that, that Chris, uh, rather that um, Scott Morrison tries to bring out, but um, it's never happened in the past. Now, I don't see any reason why it'll happen in the future. It's a dangerous voyage. Boogies? No, Julian Burnside, there was no influx of asylum seekers after the dismantling of John Howard's Pacific Solution, just 50,000 of them. <laughs> then there's Burnside's hypocrisy. For example, in 2016, he tweeted, Is it true Peter Dutton has over 5 million in negatively geared properties? He needs to come clean and tell us. Well, last year, when Burnside ran as a federal candidate for the Greens, who opposed negative gearing, 
The Australian revealed Burnside and his wife had amassed a $20 million property portfolio, <laughs> including <laughs> a Victorian mansion, multiple waterfront apartments in Melbourne and Sydney and a spectacular clifftop beach retreat. The paper also noted Mr Burnside declined to say whether he had used <laughs> negative gearing to amass his property holdings. And in, <laughs> I mean, and in 2014, Renaissance man Julian Burnside <laughs> tweeted, quote, Ripper peace, Louise Milligan outs AFL for its 1950s-style sexism. But last year, Burnside was caught out enjoying the benefits of, you guessed it, <laughs> 1950s-style sexism. <laughs> Before you ask, yes, I belong to a men-only club. I have belonged to it for 40 years when things were a bit oh. different. Which club's that? It's a, a thing called the Melbourne Savage Club. I think you got married there as well, I didn't you, I got married you, there. Julian? Yes, I did get married there. Well, don't and talk to me about no, dismantling the patriarchy don't, don't if you're going to be involved in the Savage okay, Club. Don't, don't interrupt. Um, I... I... I'm sorry, we're just talking down to a woman. Yeah. <laughs> don't interrupt, don't interrupt while I'm talking about the Savage Club. Woman. Jesus. In 2015, Burnside tweeted in contrived horror, Tony Abbott compares Bill Shorten to Nazi propaganda chief Joseph Goebbels. This man is our Prime Minister. <laughs> but just the year before, Burnside had tweeted... Question time, Scott Morrison looking more and more like Hitler huh? as he ranted at the dispatch box. And in 2017, Burnside drew an analogy between Australia's immigration detention centres and Auschwitz, the Nazi concentration camp, tweeting a retired conservative judge of appeal referred to our detention centres as concentration camps. He was right. Auschwitz, etc. equals death camps. So, what do you say about a man who's supposedly a gifted barrister and a great intellectual that falls, a guy who falls so easily for hoaxes, who is so easily caught out on his own hypocrisy and who apparently believes that fighting for civil liberties requires defending a repressive state government? And this is why it's such great irony, because all along you know he's just a simpleton. Don't talk down to me. Don't talk down to me.